you guys it's karen and i wanted to come and answer one of your questions um which is what are the best treats for dogs um i help dogs that have separation anxiety and i do kind of online consultations and i've also helped dogs in person and a, a lot of the time people are asking what are the healthiest treats i can use and how can i do that affordably because the healthiest treats are sometimes very expensive so i want to show you a bit of everything here i'm going to show you some really healthy um, treats that you can buy ready made to go i'll talk to you about some human foods that you could also use as treats and i'll show you an alternative that's much less expensive one of my very favorite brands for good treats is the innocent hound um they're also called the innocent pet sometimes but the innocent hound these are sliced duck sausages so you can see i bought a big tub because this makes it much more affordable than buying them in a small packet when i ordered this big tub of duck sausages i also ordered this just to try so this is the the packet you would get for probably two or three pounds and um, this one is puppy training treats lamb with yellow spit split pea what you're looking for in healthy treats is the percentage of meat so you want it to be you know 70 percent meat at least rather than a lot of treats are 15 or 10 percent meat and the rest is cereals and grains that's something that is just going to it could cause your skin allergies it could flare up allergies that they may have um it could cause hyperactivity there's all sorts of things that having cereals and um treats could cause but it just has no nutritional value whatsoever the other thing is it won't it won't fill them up and i always aim because i am taking away a portion of watson's dinner and replacing it with treats my aim is that the treats i'm giving him are really tasty for him and a high value reward but that will still also fill that gap so that i don't have to overfeed him you know we'll still fill him up um, and be good for him. So if you look at the ingredients of these puppy training treats, they are 80% lamb, um, vegetable glycerin in here, yellow split pea, 8% and minerals. There's nothing else in here. Now, vegetable glycerin is doesn't have any nutritional value, but that will have been put in here to keep these treats moist. These are the perfect size, these little um, puppy ones. So they are, let me show you, about yay big. I would probably even cut those in half if I was using them for a find it game. Well, actually, the, most of them are smaller, yeah. Perfect size, that is. Um, so they're really good. I would happily buy a big tub of those because I've already tested them and Watson loves them. Um, but I get the sliced duck sausage, which again, this has got... Uh, 80% duck, potato, vegetable, glycerin, cranberries, 2% and minerals, and that's it. Nothing else in there. So like I said, you're looking for treats that have a high meat value, 70% at least, I would say, um, and you don't just see cereals, um, meat derivatives, things like that. The fewer ingredients, the better. Um, next is True Instinct have come out with these. They're called Meat Bites, and these ones are lamb. These, I need my glasses, I believe are lamb and nothing else. Yeah, composition, lamb, 100%. So these are just air dried lamb treats. So you can see, see again, they are the perfect little size. Um, I don't know whether these would be okay for puppies. It doesn't say on here whether or not they'd be good for puppies or not, but I don't see why not, because they are just 100% lamb and you can feed puppies, you know, just meat. So really really good they're probably the best but you know this is going to be two or three pounds for this little bag and it's, it's up to there so they're not going to last you very long but they are the best treats going this is another single ingredient um company and treats this is venny dog pure there's pheasant bites so these are a bit bigger but the ingredients are 100 percent air dried pheasant and these are particularly good um, for dogs that have any allergies. If you're perhaps trying to do an elimination diet or figure out what they're allergic to, something like this that has, let me just make sure it is 100% pheasant ingredients, pheasant fillets. Yeah, that's it. That's all that's in here. Um, but using something like pheasant, rabbit, you know, something that isn't the usual chicken, beef, fish type of um, product really helps dogs with allergies 
it helps you figure out what exactly they're allergic to. We use lots of things like this when Watson was on his elimination diet. Um, he had, saying that, he was on six weeks of just having pork, but that could have been pheasant. It could have been, you know, anything else. I think we did also give him some rabbit treats at some point. Um, but this is another great company, Veni Dog, to get treats from. I'll list, I'll put a link to all of these treats um, in the description. Next, on to some more affordable options. And I often buy these from Pets at Home. These are um, real meaty treats with beef. Note that it says with beef because there's a lot of um, products. We've been bought a lot of treats over the years that have chicken in them without people knowing um, because it can say with beef and then you read on the back and it's 70% chicken. Um, Watson is allergic to chicken. These ones are actually 50% beef and 45% pork and then there's minerals and nothing else in them. Um, and these are really, really good and you can actually cut these in half um and they will be then about the same size as those puppy treats and these are really good for find it they're very very moist so these would be good for dogs that have um you know missing teeth if they've had teeth removed or find it hard to chew these would be really good um and i think these are great treats for find it because they don't leave any residue but they're a good strong smell and they're really attractive to dogs so love those nights and i normally get those from pets at home but i'm sure i can link them on amazon for you these are perfect um I was going to say for puppies, but again, I don't know. Let's have a look. Some of them say not for puppies, but I would imagine down to the ingredients, they should be okay. Let me put my glasses on and tell you the ingredients. So this is beef liver, 58%, venison, 14%, starch, glycerin, vegetable protein, sorbitol and salt. So these aren't quite as pure. You can see that they've got starch in there, which isn't ideal. It's another one of those things that just isn't, it's just used as a filler you know it doesn't have any nutritional value and so overall they are 74 percent meat um of which 14 percent is venison so you can see that these are venison training treats but actually they're mostly beef liver now this does mean that they're very very attractive to dogs and um when i open them you'll see how small they are, which is why I think they'd be great for puppies because they're tiny. Um, and these are really good when we play specific games with Watson, like there's a game we play where we've just put boxes in the middle of the floor here and just throw a treat into the box and he has to figure out which box it's gone in and he also has to negotiate all the boxes. It's a really good game for dogs. Um, these are brilliant because they're so small because you use quite a few. You, as soon as he gets one, you throw another one in. And so you can throw one after the other. So they'd be really good for kind of shaping training and that kind of thing. Um, and they're, because they're quite hard, they make a good sound, which is what you want. So they're really good, um, but not quite as healthy as everything else. And you can buy these in a bulk box. I've bought a box of these. And so I've got about 10 packets of these in a box um, because they're just really, really good. I'm not perfect, you know, with my treats with Watson. I can't say that 100% of the time he's only getting meat treats. I just try to do the very best I can, you know. Um, and the final one to show you is the Dog Deli. This is another company that I think does some really good treats. And I always buy these from the vet when we go. These are duck, duck sausage slices. And the ingredients in here are duck 90% sorbitol 6% and glycol 4%. So basically it's 10% sugar, 90% duck. I know that Watson loves duck. These are perfect. You can split them into two. Something that's probably worth knowing is that if you give a dog, well, not that one, that one's really skinny. <laughs> if you give a dog one of these, he gets one treat. If you break it in half, as long as you're not giving them the tiniest amount, but I, I think this is as small as I would go with these. If you give him that and that, he, in his mind, he's just got two treats versus he got one treat because it doesn't spend very much time in their mouth. You know, they get a quick taste of it and swallow it very quickly, as I'm sure you know. And so the, if you make it smaller, they're going to think they're getting more. You don't have to give them as much. <laughs> um, but these are also really good for for find it, for putting in enrichment toys. Um, and although it's got the 10% sugar in, it's 90% duck. So I'm okay with that. You know, um, the sugar isn't ideal. It isn't, ha doesn't have any nutritional benefit, but it makes it that these aren't just crunchy. Um, they're a little bit more moist. And of course, it's a preservative as well. So those are all the treats I've got to show you that are actually sold as treats. I wanted to show you two other things here that are actually um, foods that you can buy that make it 
much less expensive um, to give your dog treats. And if you are intending, if you are starting, say, doing agility training or you have a puppy and you're starting doing all of the training that goes with having a puppy, which will take you one to two years, I would say. The first year is really important to do training every single day on, you know, weight, stay, heal, come, retrieve, whatever, you know, there's there's lots and lots of training. I would say find a really good, really high value food that you can use as treats that is not their main food. So for example, this is Watson's main food. Now, unfortunately, they just come in these plain bags, but this is the Innocent Hound again. So remember I said, I like the Innocent Hound treat, but this is lamb casserole, it's called. It's air dried food. This is what it looks like. They look like treats. Watson acts as if these are treats. And I should have started by telling you that Watson is super fussy. Watson is not somebody I can give fruit and vegetable to. I'll, I'll talk about that in a moment because that is another option. But um, he's super fussy with what he eats for his dinner. He's super fussy with what he'll take for treats. But these to him are super high value. We're just loving the fact that he's really enjoying his dinner and he will work for these. And Watson won't work for much. If I put Watson's main kibble into... I don't know, a Kong or any kind of toy, he just wouldn't be interested, but he will work for these. These are just air dried lamb and vegetables. And so they've got a lot of nutritional value to them. And so you could easily use these as treats if, I mean, I think it's a great thing to feed them as a meal as well, but for us, this is his dinner. So I don't often use these as treats, but buy something that you're not giving them as part of their dinner so that it is novel to them. Um, and they will think of it as a treat. But this is something that has a lot of nutritional value. But the other thing is, although this is very expensive to buy at the beginning, it will save you so much money. This costs £40 for three kilograms. So that's two big bags like this. But I'll put the, the differences on screen versus buy-in. So same company versus buy-in the treats versus this. I'll tell you how much it is per, say, 100 grams. This is 70 grams, but per 100 grams, the difference is enormous. You'd be much better buying the lamb casserole food, or they also do a salmon one. Um, and you can buy a mixed bag, actually, where you'd get one bag of salmon and one bag of lamb. Watson doesn't like fish. I told you he was fussy. Um, and these lamb treats are moist, and you can easily break them or cut them in half and make them smaller. So you could make them the size of these puppy treats. Um, so like I said, I'll put the price difference on screen. And in that same, with that same thing in mind, this is um, a kibble that I would recommend. Now, it's, this is a kibble I'd recommend that you feed your dog anyway. There's not many kibbles I recommend because Watson has been on a raw diet. His, his whole diet is, is talked about in another video, but he's no longer on raw. He's now on air dried food. So he's on the lamb casserole from the Innocent Hound. And he's also having um, True Instinct air dried beef. Um, but this is a kibble that I would feed him because most kibbles you look at is very, very low meat. One of the kibbles he's been on is the Heels, um, the science one for his tummy, and it has 16% meat in it and that's it. Whereas I like to give him something that doesn't have additives and preservatives and is, is as natural as you can get for a kibble. So you can see that this is 80% duck, 20% vegetables, fruit, what does that say, herbs and botanicals. There's no grains in this, there is no gluten and no white potato. So what we use this kibble for, because he doesn't actually eat this very often as, as a kibble, because he's having, you know, he was on either raw food or he was on, he's now on the lamb air dried. Um, and he, the other kibble he has is an allergy type kibble and it doesn't have an awful lot of meat in it. So this to him is a treat. And so I can use these kibbles as a treat. Now, there was a time he was having this for his dinner and when he had it for his dinner, and you can see these are tiny, they're really, again, these would be really good to play that cardboard box game with. When he was having these as his dinner, he then stopped working for these as a treat because to him, they were just his dinner and they were boring. So if you're feeding your dog a kibble, try to find a different flavor kibble and buy a bag of it. Again, you will save so much money. It will still, although R2 is very expensive, I get this off Amazon, by the way, because they no longer do it in pets at home. Um, it still works out cheaper than buying lots of bags of treats. The only thing is, I suppose you need to to know that they like it. You know, you need to be aware. But I think if you 
maybe if you emailed them if you certainly if you can get it in pets at home maybe some stores still do it if your dog doesn't like it you can take it back um i'm talking to those of you that have a fussy dog like me um and i found that out quite early on about pets at home you can buy a bag of dog food and if your dog wants it you can take it back which is brilliant because like i said watson is fussy but yeah if you found a food that they like and you know the kind of taste that they like find another kibble that you only use for treats the thing to talk about is human food there are so many types of human food that you can give a dog um and whether or not they are a high value treat will depend on the dog um i heard about a dog recently that loved cauliflower um now i've never met a dog that would love cauliflower but i imagine maybe labs <laughs> maybe labs would enjoy cauliflower i don't know apparently some dogs like green beans Watson will tolerate green beans in food, but if I put carrots or anything else in there, he would actually eat the food and spit the vegetables out. He doesn't like any vegetables, but you can give dogs raw carrots, you can give them green beans, cauliflower, cabbage, spinach, kale. You know, there's so many different types of vegetables that you can give them, but I think if you're going to do training and, and give them a treat, it has to be a treat. And so, you know, it depends on your dog's taste. But the other thing that a lot of dogs enjoy is fruit. Um, again, Watson is not somebody that will eat any type of fruit. I have tried banana, apple, watermelon, um, melon, kiwi. I've tried an awful lot of fruit with him and he doesn't like it. But you could just have a little taste test with your dog and find a fruit that they like um, and use fruit as a, a treat. The thing that we do, however, um, and a large proportion of Watson's treats aren't actually these treats you see here. Um, I give Watson an enrichment game every day. Um, so that is after his evening walk, he comes in and has some kind of enrichment game. Sometimes it's just a little plat that I've made, you know, and at the weekends it's a bit more complex because he hasn't had quite as much walking. So we tend to wear out his brain more at the weekend. Um, and we use pork. I get pork loin um just packets of pork loin from Asda. We get four packets of those a week. So we use a lot, but they are, it's two for three pounds. Um, and that means he's getting just meat. And it's something that is really, really high value. Now you can do that with chicken if your dog's not allergic to chicken. Watson, like I said, is, so that won't work for him. But most dogs will just love pure chicken. And that's probably the easiest and you know cheapest thing to buy, but it's also very good for them. And just cut it up into tiny pieces. Um, you can also cook them liver. I sometimes buy lamb's liver from Asda and cook it for Watson. Um, I don't do it too much because you can give a dog too much liver. Um, hot dogs. You can get hot dogs and cut them up into tiny little pieces. And they're really, really good as a high value treat. Hot dogs are something we used a lot when we were training recall when Watson was a puppy because they can smell it from quite far away. And re it reminds them that if they come back, they'll get a bit of hot dog. Um, so there's all sorts of human foods that I would say would be better for you to spend your money on you know than buying um cheap treats the kind of treats that I would avoid I'm trying to think what are the ones I would avoid I threw away the other day smackos I had got pedigree smackos they're very strong smelling so they're actually quite good for find it and whatnot but I looked at the ingredients and they weren't great as suspected I did actually keep the packet um funny enough I'll tell you what happened I threw these in the bin and I had a big um, bin liner in my bedroom because I was having to clear out of some things. Watson was on steroids at the time, which has made him super, super hungry. He came home from the walker and actually ripped the bin apart trying to get to these. So they are definitely something that dogs love. And Watson has never done that before. And um, that was the steroids talking. <laughs> so the ingredients in this are meat and animal derivatives. This is the thing that you want to avoid. You don't want something to say derivatives because that is not a part of an animal that will be nutritious. So um, meat and animal derivatives, which says total 42% of which 27% is beef. So basically we don't know what the other 15% had to do my maths there. We don't know what the other 15% is. What kind of meat is it? It's just any meat that they can get hold of by the sounds of it. Then it's derivatives of vegetable origin, minerals, cereals, various sugars oils and fats so there's not very much in here in fact there's nothing in here that is nutritious for the dog there's not real meat in here it's meat and animal derivatives we don't even know what type of meat the only thing we know is there's 27 percent beef um there's a lot of cereals there's a lot of sugars it's they're just 
it, you would be much better and much cheaper to buy carrots or to buy, I don't know whether you can give them celery because it might be in the onion family. But, you know, I know that it can be expensive buying treats and it's easy to just grab a packet of these and they last a long time. But you can just buy a pack of pork, buy a pack of even ham. Ham's sometimes a little bit salty, but it, there is a way of feeding a dog healthy and not having to spend a lot of money. Or like I said, find a nice kibble for them. Um, you could even use wet food and dehydrate it. That's something I've yet to try. I want to buy some some wet food and put little lumps on a, a baking tray and cook it, but that's a bit more involved. <laughs> so anyway, I think that that is everything to tell you today. I hope that that was useful to you. Um, I will put links to everything that I've talked about today, including kibble and the lamb food, etc., so that you can buy that if you want to. Let me know what your favourite thing is to feed your dog, and I will speak to you again soon.